Praise the Lord, church. God bless you today. It's so good to see each of you in the house of the Lord. Let's all stand if you will and let's open this service with prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we're thankful to be in your house, Lord. Help us, Lord, to start this year to pray to praise you and to worship God and to honor you, Lord. God, that your will would be done, Lord. God, that you would have your way, Lord. That you would touch every heart, Lord. That you would bless each part of this service, Lord. Anoint this service, O God. Lord, as we honor you and praise you, for you, you're worthy of all our praise. We thank you for your name today. Hallelujah. Let's worship as they sing. Oh, 
Praise God. Praise God.
Brother John and Brother Osborne would help us out. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Yes, yes. Thank you for this opportunity to give unto the work of the Lord. We ask that you take this offering, God, that you bless it and use it for your glory and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Come and give. Down 
there are times I do not understand God. I know you don't like to hear that coming from a pastor, but I'm human. There's times I don't understand God. But I also know according to the word, there's times I'm not supposed to understand Him. You know what faith is? Faith is a muscle. It only grows stronger or gets weaker. Yes. For those of you that would like to get a body like your pastor all muscular and stuff, you had to go to the gym and work out. <laughs> if you don't use the muscle, the physical, it grows weaker. Yes. It will deteriorate. Faith is the same way. Yes. Yes. We want great faith in God, but we don't want to go through the process of attaining that great faith. Yes. Yeah. We want God just to speak the word and we have great faith. That's not the way it works. We have to go through the valley. Yes. We have to go through the trials. Yes. And we have to go through the tribulations. Yes. And we have to fight the lion. And we have to fight his brother. Yes. And we have to fight the devil. Yes. And we have to fight hell. But the more we do, the more we exercise our faith, the stronger it gets. And the bigger God gets to us, can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Only got one announcement today. Today's the day we're taking up a special offer to donate or give to Brother Poe in Bristol. Everything we take up is going to go to him. He's starting to work up. Actually, their first church service is today. You give, the Lord will bless you. All the other, all the other announcements are on the bulletin. Grab one and read them. If you have your Bibles and want to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 19. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 19. Certainly good to have our guest today. Can we give them all a good hand for being here? Thank you so much for being in service with us. Isaiah 43 and 14. The first little phrase says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now I want to jump over to Psalm chapter 34 and verse number 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse number three says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Yes. Yes. I will bless the Lord. Isaiah said, Behold, I will do a new thing. We are in the first service of the new year. I figured y'all be more excited than that. My message I bring to you today is not an original. I actually stole it from Sister Sharon McKee, the fault. So we got it live. We got it recorded. I'm giving her credit. It's not what the new year brings to you, but what you bring to the new year. Amen. It's not what the new year brings to you, but what you bring to the new year. You can be seated in the lovely name of Jesus. Thank you for standing in the honor of the reading of the word of God. I have no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that some of the old battles we fought in 2021 are going to carry over in 2022. Amen. I know that's not the word you wanted to hear, but it's the truth. Yes, it is. And I can promise you that there's going to be new battles to fight in 2022. Yes. It's a new year. I don't know what the year's going to hold. If you would have told me about last year, I never would have believed what would have happened during the year. For me, for you, for us as a church as a whole. I don't know what their future holds. But I also, the determining factor of my whole situation and my attitude and my outcome is what I bring into the new year. It's my reaction to what happens to me, what your reaction to what happens to you determines what takes place in your life. There are times in our life that we label trials and tribulations when in fact they are just a part of life. They are going to happen. Can you say amen? amen. I was 
quite inspired as we made the quick trip to Kentucky. We left out on Thursday, the funeral was Friday. And we were in the congregation of the church of well over 300 and some odd people, no doubt. I watched as a young lady who was in her 30s sitting beside her two young children. She had just lost her husband, no doubt, 13 years ago when they took their vows. They imagined they had a long life together. That is why you and I must always take every moment and make it as precious as possible. It may make every memory as precious as possible. Yes, Can you say amen? amen? I sat there and watched as her husband, 36 years of age, laid in the casket. I watched as the songs begin to play during this service. And when I say that she's literally broken, I am being serious that she is broken. Both hands are broken. One leg was severely broken. They had to do several surgeries on it just to be able to allow her to try to get around. She cannot stand up. She had to have three people help her up to the casket to see her husband one last time. But I watched as the funeral went on, as the songs began to play, as this young lady raised a broken hand with a cast on it, and tears began to flow down her cheeks. And she began to praise the Most High God. And she began to give thanks and worship Him. Amen. The Creator of the heaven and the earth. And I thought, my Lord, this new year, I don't know what it contains, but if I can grab that type of attitude, if I can grab a hold of that kind of mindset, when I go into the new year, no matter what comes my way, no matter what battles I face, no matter what trials I go through, no matter what valleys I walk through, no matter how big the giant, if I can still lift my hands and I can still worship and praise, come on, and redeem and worship Him, come on, come on, I'm going into the new year with something I bring into it. Yes. I don't know what this new year brings. I heard Sister McCausland as she made mention of being thankful the opportunity to come to the church and worship and can I, can I jump on that just for a little bit and encourage you? You better be in that door as much as possible. Listen, I understand with the, with, the, with the circumstances and the environment, the sickness nobody knows. Listen, I have respect if you want to stay home, but don't you dare stay home for any other excuse. It's not valid. He won't hold water on the day come when we stand before his throne. No matter what we try to validate our excuse, there is no excuse. Listening in conversation with pastors who have connections politically. Ladies and gentlemen, of what our government is trying to do yes. Yes. and the laws are trying to pass, yes. you better darken that door every chance you get. Yes. I'm talking about for us here in the United States of America. Yes. I don't know what it's going to hold. But I do know it's not going to change my mind about God. Amen. It's not going to change my faith in God. Amen. It's not going to change my worship in God. Yes. It's not going to change my belief in God. Yes. He's going to be just as strong in 2022 as he was in 2021. Yes. I believe he's going to do mighty works. I believe he's going to do mighty miracles. Yes. I believe he's going to do mighty acts. Yes. Those of you that were here on Wednesday night. The last service of 2021. I told you. Without knowing anything. That 2022 will be some disappointment time. Disappointing times. There will be some trials and tribulations. There will be circumstances. There will be heartache and there will be pain. But there will also be victories. Yes. And oh what a prophetic word that went out. Because the next couple of days. We receive phone calls and text messages. Some good news, some not so good news. But through it all, come on, I know God will remain faithful. Through it all, I know God will remain good. Through it all, I know God is still God and He doesn't change. Through it all, I know that He still loves me. Through it all, I know He's still going to take care of me. But through it all, I know He would lead His church on to something more glorious. Can you say amen? Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? Oh, 
disappointment. There's going to be heartache. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be difficult times. But what's important is what you bring to the new year. That when those times come, I'm still going to be on the front row. When those difficult times come, I'm still going to raise my hands and worship Him. When those times come, come on, you're not going to be able to tell if I'm on the mountain or in the valley. Because I want to bring in a new year worship and praise and adoration. Why? Because my God deserves it. This is, this is my personal belief. You see, the Bible says that on that great day, on Judgment Day, we all have to stand before God. Every single one of us. Yes. One by one. Yes. And we're going to have to give an account of every deed we have ever done. Yes, amen. Yes. I personally believe that every excuse that I offer to Him on that day there's going to be somebody that stands up and says, oh, but I went through the same thing you did and it didn't hinder my walk with God. All right, Jesus. We offer all kinds of excuses. Listen, I understand. I have told you multiple times, I would rather err on the side of mercy. Come on, and, and if we get a snowstorm, an ice storm, I know half you fools can't drive on the bus anyway, so we probably won't have church. I understand all that, but come on, if it's snowing in California, you can't come to church here. I tell you, there's going to be somebody that stands up from another country that says, we wade in flooded rivers. We walk for miles. We fought people, and we fought things just to get you a church service. given to me. Why I can't be faithful to the house of God? Oh, it, it, it hurts me because I'm thinking one day we're going to have to give an account. One day we're going to have to stand before God and he's going to say what about it? And on that day I'm afraid there are going to be no excuses. It's going to be I just didn't want to go to church. But I come to tell you in this new year I want to become more dedicated and more sold out. I want to get a holy God more than I ever have before. the first Sunday of the, of the new year is Vision Sunday. And churches cast their vision for the year. And that was my plans until I felt God changing my spirit. And, and so I think for the next few Sundays I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this thing over the next few weeks. But I come to tell you today that the new year is going to bring some new stuff but he's still the same God. Yeah. He will not be defeated. Come on. He will not be run off. He's not going to be confused. Nothing, you've heard me say multiple times, nothing has happened without the approval of God. Nothing, 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 nothing has happened without the approval of God. I always like to use the example of Job. Where God suggested, have you considered my servant Job? And the enemy says, oh, yes I have. God said, or the devil said, well, he serves you because of your riches or because of his riches and you blessed him. And, and if you let me take away, he could not do anything unless he had permission from the Almighty. Right. All, right. All the mess that's going on in the world today, it didn't catch him off guard. It didn't catch him by surprise. Right. But what he's looking for is a church, a people. An individual that's going to remain faithful through it all. That says despite my obstacles and despite my circumstances and despite what I'm going through and despite the enemy surrounding me, I'm still going to be faithful. I'm still going to be sold out. I'm still going to give him my praise and my worship. I'm still going to magnify him. I'm still going to be faithful to, to the things of God. You know how you get out of a financial situation? I'm so glad you asked. You give your way out of it. All right, yes. You cannot, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot out give God. I told you, and I'm not trying to edify my family because we're human just like you are. We are not perfect. We don't have it together. We argue and fight. Come on, snarl each other like dogs. 
out. Come on, it happened not too long ago. We are just like you are. Y'all think I'm exaggerating. That's, not, that's about the way it is. But I can tell you that my wife, I told you this story that she had, she had come up with an idea for Christmas as a family. We're going to save up money and we're going to do something as a family. We're going to make memories. And then this happened in Kentucky to our friends and, and other people we knew and, and, and all that. And so my wife came and she said, what do you think about taking this money we had saved up for our family and giving it to and donating to these folks? And my boys were automatically on board. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, that's what it's all about, is it not? Helping others. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, with almost 24 hours, we had recouped all that we had given to God. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot out give God. It ought to be, when I'm going through a financial difficulty, I ought to give more than I ever got before. I know that's not always popular. Let me tell you, I'm not after money. I'm after you. And I'm after your blessing that I know God's got in store for you, that he wants to give to you. And I want, to, I want you to make up your mind that this new year is going to be a new you. You're going to be a different person. You're going to be a different Christian. You're going to be become more dedicated, more sold out. The tenacity of your walk with God is going to be more determined than ever before. I saw something. I, read, I was reading some this morning. A blog that was put on by a pastor whom I admire very, very much. And he said the average, the average percentage given by church growers, church growers is 1.7%. Tithes means 10%. I, I, I believe, I, again, I'm not after you, buddy. Let me clarify that. But I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. That's right. Amen. And I firmly believe in a church our size that if everybody would pay tithes and offerings according to the word, we wouldn't have to have fundraisers. We wouldn't have to take up special offerings. Why? Because when you give according to God's plan, God can help but bless you, right? And bless your church, right? And bless everybody else around you. And bless your family. Come on, I'm talking about a new year. And it's going to be a new me. It's going to be more dedicated than ever before. Let me get all the money. I'm feeling some kickback. Usually happens when a pastor gets all money. I'm not, I'm not buying a new plane. I don't like to fly anyway. <laughs> this new year is going to bring times and we're not going to know what to do. Amen. We're not going to know what direction to go. Right. There's times we're going to be standing at a crossroad. Yes. Yes. Seeking and desiring the voice of God. I have been there. I am not going to relay any kind of situation and, and, and not let you know I'm not been there before. I have been there before. Yes, amen. Not knowing my wife and I were at a crossroads once in our marriage, not with each other, but I'm talking about together, not ministry. Not knowing which way to go. You know what you do at that point in time? You stand. And you stand strong. And you stand on the firm foundation. And you just keep doing the things you know to do. You continue to be faithful. And you continue to be dedicated. It may take a while. But God will show up. He will show you a clear path. He will open a door. He will make a way. But you just keep doing what you know to do. So when it happens to you this year, you keep being faithful to the things that you know to be faithful to. It's not about what the new year brings to you, but what you bring to the new year. My prayer for us as a church and as individuals that when this coming year, if the Lord does not come back in this year, I don't know when he's going to. The trumpet may very well sound in 2022. I hope you are ready. Yes. If you are not ready, let me tell you how you get ready. You repent of your sins. Yes. Yes. That means you say, God, I'm sorry for all that I have done wrong. And if you are honest and sincere, in that moment's time, the blood that Jesus shed upon Calvary, that one precious drop will wash you clean. Come on, of all your sins. Yes. Yes. Then the very next step is to be 
be baptized in the name of Jesus yes, yes. for the remission of your sins. That's an indication of we bury the old man and you come up a new individual. Yes. And then, according to the word, you become a candidate for the infill of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking another language. That means God's Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. And when you do all of that, guess what? You are ready. And then you be faithful. You be sensitive to the voice of God. You ask your pastor, what do I need to do? What can I do in another church? Come on. What can I do to be healthy, faithful? Come on. All these things. And then you are ready for when the trumpet sounds. Because yes. one day it will sound. Yes, it will. One day he's going to call his church away. Yes, sir. And whether you're ready or not, it's going to take place. Jesus. So if you are not ready, I pray this new year, you make up in your mind, I'm going to get ready. Maybe you're here today and you're not as close to God as what you used to be. I serve a God of grace, mercy, come on in compassion. And I hear him saying today, I'm still here. Won't you get back to where you used to be? Yes. Oh, yes. It's not what the new year brings to you, but what you're going to bring to the new year. I pray that if the Lord tarries the entire year, that at the end of the year, I pray that as the devil says, Whoa, I'm glad that year's over with because that church became more dedicated than I've ever seen them before. I seen their prayer life grow. I seen their Bible reading grow. I seen their praise and worship grow. I seen their faithfulness grow. I saw the dedication to the church services grow. And man, I gave them two Antonio. I gave them everything. And they fought back with everything they got because they brought something to the new year. Yes, yes. amen, amen. Feel like I can't break that, yes. get past that barrier. I don't believe some of you are grasping it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's not what the new year brings to you, but what you're going to bring to the new year. Yes. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. If the government passes a law that says you cannot assemble, All right. and your pastor lets everybody know, oh, we're going to assemble. Will you show up? Don't raise your hands because I don't want to see y'all lie in the house of God. <laughs> Will you show up? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you that we are this close to it, yes. listen to me. Yes. If they allow laws to pass, we're not going to be this close to it. We're going to be in it. Yes. Right. right now, your government is trying to place laws in the place yes. that will shut our doors and will not allow us to assemble. Yes. All right. yes. I hope you got your mind made up. Yes, sir. It's a new year. Yes. It's a new thing. Yes. Yes. But you know what? I'm bringing something to the new year. Yes. That if my God, if I got to go to jail, then I hope y'all bail me out because I don't want y'all to leave me hanging, you know. But if that's what it takes, we're going to go forward and we're going to press and we're going to have church and we're going to allow God to have his way. And we're going to see people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to see people delivered from drugs. Because it's not what the new year holds, it's how I approach the new year. Do you know that a lot of times your deliverance depends on your reaction to situations? I'm trying to close it, I promise I am. Your deliverance, as, as the, the quick deliverance that you seek, a lot of times depends on your reaction to situations. Yes. If I react with praise and worship and faithfulness and dedication, like it's nothing's ever wrong, I feel like that my deliverance comes a lot faster. Yes, but if I fall into the woe is me, Amen. I just want to sit at home and feel sorry for myself, right. yeah. pull my bottom lip out, <laughs> ain't nobody going through what I'm going through. Let me tell you, that is a lie from the pits of hell. Because throughout the history of mankind and Christianity, there's been somebody who's went through the same thing you. I have told you multiple times. I'll tell you again. There's only one person in the history of mankind who's went through something that nobody else ever has nor will ever be. And that is the Virgin Mary. Right. It ain't going to happen again. She's the only one that can say that she had a virgin birth. Right. Everything else in life. Come on. That we go through. Somebody else. Somewhere. And Christianity has went through it. And they come through shining like gold. They come through praising and worshiping. They come through more dedicated. And more faithful than ever before. I'm telling you. We go to Kentucky. To try to encourage people. And we walk.
walk away more encouraged. They encourage us. I watch as people who have lost everything. They have to start all over again. And they have like, oh, it's just another day. I serve a good God. They talk about the goodness of God. And they're faithful to their church. And they're faithful to their pastor. And they're faithful in worship. Not one time have they missed one service in the midst of all of this. Some of us, man, I'm, I'm turning pastoral on y'all. I'm making some of y'all comfortable. I can feel it. But I'm telling you, one day we're going to stand before God. Some of us get a hang in. We can't come to church. Little Fifi needs to go to the vet. i got to make sure she's okay. Listen. The enemy knows how to discourage us. If he knows it's going to be a stumbling block to us, He's going to let it happen. He's going to do his best yes. to try to keep us. Yes. But I want us to be more determined yes. that I'm going to show up yes. Sunday morning. I'm going to be here for prayer service on Sunday night. I'm going to be here for Wednesday night service. Come on. And, 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 and for Bible study and any other special services we may have. I'm going to be here and I'm going to praise and I'm going to worship despite what I'm going through. And I'm going to show the devil it's not what the new year brings to me, but it's what I'm bringing to the new and it's more dedication than ever. I want somebody who would stand just for a moment. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to sound negative, but I know that some of you have received it and some of you have not. I'm just preaching to you what God's given to me today. If you don't want to become more faithful and dedicated, that's your business. I've done my part. I've given over the word of God, and my word says that his word will never return void. Yes, 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 yes. But as I told you on Wednesday night, life is full of choices. And today you have a choice. We're starting off a new year. I've told you that many people often say, I'm turning over a new leaf. The problem with a new leaf is that it's loose and it gets blown back over to the original state. Let God create in you a new tree. Let him start on the inside, cleaning you up. I'm not here to point fingers. Maybe you've grown cold in Jesus. I'm not here to point fingers. We've all been there at some point in time in our life. But I serve a God who is merciful and graceful and loving and compassionate. And he says, you know what? Now is the time to start over. Now is just as good a time as any to become more dedicated. Can we all bow right here today? Dear Lord, I come before you. I have preached the message you have laid upon my heart. I have no doubt, Lord, not because I'm preaching it, because I'm something special, because I'm not. But I have no doubt that somebody here needs to hear this message today. I don't know what this new year is going to hold, but God, if we can walk into this new year more determined than ever, then I'm going to be more faithful, more sold out to you than ever before. That no matter what I face, you're going to carry me through. You're going to carry me over. You're going to give me the breakthrough, the victory that I need. And I pray your spirit goes forth today as you massage hearts, as you massage souls, as you touch lives, God, as you call, I have no doubt you're calling people today. I pray that they give over to that today. We're not here to criticize and we're not here to vote. We're here to help and to encourage, Lord. I pray you move today, Lord. In Jesus' name. These altars are open for anybody who wants to come pray. As they sing, as they sing. Will you make up in your mind you become more dedicated than ever before in the coming year? Come on, these offers are open.
major sacrifices. I like to, I like to poke my chest out and pat myself on the back. Well, I got out in the poured rain and I went to church. When there was a martyr years ago, one of the early churches, his name was Polycarp. They tied him to a stake because of his belief in Jesus. Going to burn him alive. He said, I've got but one request. They thought it strange. He said, don't tie my hands. As the flames went up around him, began to lick his body and burn away the flesh. Story has it that through the flames, you can see him with his hands raised. Worshiping. Yes. The man of God. You know why? Because Jesus was truly in the center of his life. I don't know what the new year brings, but what are you going to bring to the new year? Let it become the center, the priority of your life. Let's all bow our heads just for a moment. We will do Lord, we come before you today. I, I thank you for the wonderful privilege to stand here today. I thank you for this wonderful group of people you have blessed us with. This wonderful church, God. I know you've got fantastic things in store. You've got so many wonderful things in store for this new year. And I pray, Lord, that we all leave here today with a determination to become more dedicated, faithful, sold out. We make you our priority more than anything. And I have no doubt, Lord, that if we do that individually and collectively as a church, we will see the abundant blessings that you have in store for us, that you've got waiting for us. I thank you for the honor and the privilege of being pastor of this great church, God. We, we have some wonderful, wonderful great people, Lord, and I'm so thankful. They love you, Lord, and I pray you encourage them and that you strengthen them, Lord, in the days of hand. I'm so thankful for our guests that are here today, God. I pray that their hearts are touched, that your spirit gets a hold of them, and they leave encouraged and more enthused than ever before, Lord. And I pray for the church this coming week, God. I pray for those in Kentucky, those affected by the storms, Lord. I pray you encourage and strengthen them, that, that we can be an encouragement to them, Lord, and hold them up in prayer. As they have a long road ahead of recovery ahead of them, Lord. Be with us, Lord God, and direct us. Help us to be sensitive to your voice. Bring us back at the next appointed time. We ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? If you can be here tonight for a prayer meeting, I encourage you to be here. Come, bring our needs, our petitions to Him, and let us allow Him to move in a mighty way. Again, thank you for being here today. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love and appreciate all of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.